Uh, my talk is about Trust the Compiler, and it's a pretty short and sweet talk about knowing what the compiler can do behind your back to optimize your code for you, and how you can make use of that to make clean code while being optimized. So, yeah, the compiler does a lot for you. Rust and LLVM implement a lot of optimization, like complex optimization passes that uh, optimize control flow, um, data, function calls, a lot of things. And I'll just cover three small optimizations you can make to uh, tell the compiler what your code actually needs to do under the hood. So for example, um, conditional flow. Your compiler is really good at understanding what conditions and what operations lead, lead to what other branches. So in this code, for example, you can see that um, I am making a match statement on integer and I'm matching based on zero, one, and unreachable. And like you as a human know that this is unreachable, of course, because when we modulo by two, you only get zero, one. But it turns out that the compiler also knows. The compiler knows that only zero, one can be hit, and it optimizes away the branch. So you hear, see we don't, is there a mouse? Oh, there's a mouse, yeah. We only hit foo and bar, but we don't hit unreachable, which is unreachable. Um, yeah, and of course this can be taken further, where for example, let's say you're writing a very high performance library that requires indexing an array of maximum length 10 with an index, but you can't really mark the index with a maximum size of 10. So here, the compiler will generally generate a panic if you, um, it will generate a panic if you fail to provide an, a, a correct index, but let's say we want to force the compiler to not generate the panic. What you can do, instead of doing arbitrary pointer accessing, you can just insert a condition like this saying, if index is bigger than 10, then it's unreachable. And LLVM under the hood know that the branch where if the value is bigger than 10 is unreachable and would optimize away the thing. So and the, you get a very, wait, so, oh, did I use the wrong image? Dang it. Oh yeah, there it is. So here is above 10 um, without the unreachable check and it generates the panic if it's bigger than 10. And in here is uh, without, with the unreachable check and it just doesn't, doesn't generate the panic at all. It only goes straight to indexing. Um, and of course, the neat thing about this approach is that you can put it behind a feature flag without having two different kinds of code. You just say, if I'm okay with having unsafe code, then just use this extra unreachable, unchecked call. Otherwise, uh, don't use it. Um, yep, another example is Static versus dynamic arrays. So dynamic arrays, the neat thing about them is that you, of course, like, you don't need to care about their size. They're all, the VEC struct is always the same size regardless of what way you use it. Um, the array can be resized, uh, whatever. There's a lot of benefits to VEC, of course. But what if, let's say you only need four elements ever. Um, okay, so in this code here, uh, we iterate and sum over them. Here's the assembly that gets generated. It's a very big assembly just to sum up four numbers. Um, of course, it's like the assembly makes sense. If you read through it, there's like SIMD optimizations in there that Rust inserts for us. It's very handy if you have a variable length array being summed. But we're only summing four elements. So let's sum, change it to restricted to four. And here is the resulting code. Um, the compiler knows that your loop is actually just for iterations, so it can flatten the loop out, and it can flatten that into a couple uh, sum calls to quickly sum it up and return the value. Another example would be static versus dynamic dispatch. So when you, dispatch is a term for invoking a function, and uh, static dispatch versus dynamic dispatch is, static dispatch is when you know the exact function address at compile time, and dynamic dispatch is where you don't know the function address at compile time and you fetch it from somewhere else. So for example, uh, let's take this trait. So trait execute, it executes uh, here and add x is just, it adds x to a passed in argument uh, returning the result. So it's a very simple trait. Here are the two ways you can invoke it or dispatch it. Uh, there is dynamic dispatch with the din keyword and then the static dispatch with the um, generic. Of course, you can use impl generic here as well. It'll be the exact same thing. And here are me, me evoking the two things. And uh, here is the compiled code from, no, 
LLVM code that gets generated using the previous code. Uh, of course, I heavily simplified this LLVM. There was a lot of attributes and other compiler stuff, and I disabled inlining to make this work correctly. But here is the simplified LLVM. Um, so here, of course, you have execute and execute dynamic and execute generic. So execute uh, loads the value, adds the two values together, returns the value, very simple. Execute generic, it knows which function to call because here it, we uh, put it a generic here. So it, at compile time, generates a new variant of every single generic uh, call that you do. So if you do different generic calls of the same function, it would generate multiple functions under the hood. If you have three versions of this trait, three implementations of this trait, and you use all three of them to call the same function, it will generate three functions under the hood. So therefore, it would know exactly which function it's calling here. That's why generic is calling execute directly. Versus execute dynamic, which is not calling execute directly, it's taking a pointer, the same pointer as down here, but it is taking this extra weird argument and then the parameter. So what is this argument? Uh, we, you can see here that the argument is used here to get percent zero from the struct, and then percent zero um, is used to index, it's index, you index into percent zero to get percent one, and then percent one is actually used as a function over here. So that's what's dy called dynamic dispatch, where we use a pointer as a function. What is this argument? Uh, here you can see, again simplified, uh, how, what gets generated under the hood for the dynamic dispatch. So the static one just gets executed directly, but the generic one, sorry, the dynamic one, you can see it's passing in the extra pointer to a V table. And the V table over here, this is what the DIN keyword actually does. It generates this V table for each instance of the trait, and that gets passed along with the, tra uh, with the reference each time as a fat pointer. And you can see here that it references at execute here in the V table. So yeah, the difference here is that the, when, you can't, when you do static dispatch, the compiler can be much smarter about your code because it can do things like inlining and um, generally optimizing things around there. Um, and it has no runtime overhead. So at runtime, the only issue is that you have more code generated, but that's usually a good thing, except for some specific edge cases. While in dynamic dispatch, it is easier to do because you don't need to worry about weird generic behavior and like worry about stuff. And reduces the amount of code generated, but that's usually um, usually not a concern. So in most cases, static dispatch is the thing to go if you really care about performance, and you can do some really cool shit with like the kind of stuff it does, because it's basically a way of using code to generate more code, which is metaprogramming. But yeah, in summary, tell the compiler your intentions, and the compiler will use those intentions to optimize your code, and the compiler can optimize a massive range of things from data flow, control flow, functional calls, algorithms, and much more. But yeah, thank you. Hello. Is there a similar, I saw uh, in that LVM IR tail call, some tail calls. Is there a similar hint to that hint you used, is there something like that, but to force a tail call? Uh, as far as I'm aware, Rust doesn't force tail calls. You just have to know which function does it for you. Like, I don't think you can explicitly force a tail call or cause a compiler error. Otherwise, you just kind of have to know that the code you wrote is a tail call, and then you can check LLVM afterwards in Godbolt if you need to. Um, I've heard that often you can clone and not, it won't actually end up cloning in real, you know, in the actual resulting code. Like, do you have examples of that or is that like really true or anything? Like, It is true in certain situations, but it is very difficult to enforce. So once you get into deeper nested code, uh, it is very hard for the compiler to keep track, especially if it's across function boundaries. When you do code across function boundaries, unless the function is inlined, the compiler rarely optimizes it. So sometimes Rust, like not LLVM, but Rust itself can actually optimize the function for you depending on how it's called. But in most cases, a function boundary is where optimization ends. Okay. One, the main place I end up using it is like the hash map entry API, for example. Is that, would that be optimized out there? Like you have to do um, on insert, you need to sort of use the key again or the, or, and modify, you need to sort of use it in two places, both those functions. Mm. Would that be optimized there, for example? 
maybe only if you allocate it and deallocate it right afterwards without any loops or any other complex logic. So it really depends, and you should check in God Godbolt if you need to. Oh, you know Godbolt, right? I haven't used that. No. Okay, uh, for everyone here, there's this great website called, I think, godbolt.com, G-O-D-B-O-L-T, you find it at Google, and it can be used to basically see the compiling result of any programming language. Um, you can use it to see the LLVM output of Rust, the assembly output of Rust and any architecture, but also the assembly and LVM outputs of any programming language you can dream of, including you know, C++ and like basically everything else. So, great website.